Hello and welcome to the Clock and Talk, an Arsenal podcast, and we're covering for fuck's sake. Good job, me and Schwinn are a lot more prepared than you, because if we came on and went, oh yeah, we didn't watch the game either, we was on the pit, it'd be a pretty shit podcast. Well, Mesut Ozil is the best number 10 in the Premier League. Yeah, that all looks good on paper, but there's never been a football match played on paper, so it's not really worth much. I'm going to make a bold prediction that Jack Wilshere will sign for West Ham United. It's time to start watching football with your eyes. I think people listen to what the commentator is saying and have that as their own opinion, but if you watch what's going on, you'll see things a lot clearer. Schwinn, who do you think is going to win the Golden Boot? I think Alexis Sanchez might do a number on that this year. <laughs> yeah, okay. Tony talks about a clock being right twice a day. Tez is right every day. Try it from five, lads. Fucking beauty! Hello and welcome to the Clock and Talk. Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. Each and every week you can listen to us via iTunes, YouTube and every other good podcast app. You can follow us at clock and underscore talk and we are also on Facebook. Um, each and every week I'm joined by two lovely chaps. So I'll introduce my first chap, Schwinn. How are you, mate? Not here, mate. <laughs> Schwinn's not here again. Oh, fuck, mate. <laughs> um, Tony, how are you, buddy? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Um, obviously, it's been a couple of days since we played, but enjoyed watching Chelsea take a bit of a pound in yesterday. So, yeah, not a bad weekend, all in all. That, was, that, was, that wasn't was bad, was it, watching that? Six no. now? Fuck. <laughs> um, and we have brought in another somebody else who also gives us a hand with the blog each week, and this is his second time on the podcast, Texas Gurner. Welcome, mate. How are you doing? Good, buddy. Good. How was your weekend? I uh, was good. And the uh, six nothing thrashing of Chelsea uh, made it even better. <laughs> it was. Um, no, very good. Now we're going to go through the Huddersfield game. We've also got a heap of questions, and we've got some emails. We've got got them all over the place, so we'll get through to them as well. Um, we we apologise for the delay. Because we had some technical issues yesterday, so our podcast will be out. Yeah, and you'll be listening, obviously. Um, also, uh, we put out a tweet earlier in the week. We've got some socks to give away, courtesy of at Throwback FBL. So, listening out throughout this podcast, then we'll have a code word for you sometime. Um, okay, let's get into this one, Tony. Uh, line up, mate. Because this was a few people I noticed on Twitter was pretty shocked at the lineup when it came out against Huddersfield. Yeah, I mean, I guess most people did. I think we'd kind of heard rumours of Aubameyang being ill, uh, but there'd been no mention of Ozil being ill. There'd been no mention of Ramsey being out. Um, so I guess they kind of came, kind of came as a shock. Um, the I think what bothered most people was going away to Huddersfield, who had scored, I think, 13 league goals and playing with a back five and then two holding midfielders. It kind of seemed a bit unnecessary. And I think that was probably what most people were, were most upset about. Um, again, do, do you really need seven defensive minded players against Huddersfield away? Probably not. But... We know that's kind of how Emery likes to set up, so I, I suppose we shouldn't really be surprised. Yeah, um, nothing surprises us these days. Uh, Texas Gurney, your thoughts when the lineup come out, mate? Yeah, I figured it was a, I figured it was a back three, and you know, no surprises like like the match against City when it turned out to be a back four. Uh, I I really didn't have any issues with it, to be honest. Uh, it made it made sense uh, seeing Glassnatch and, and Maitland Niles are probably better suited to be wing backs opposed to full backs in a back four, and then Awobi and McTyron uh, uses inside forwards. I was a bit surprised with uh, McTyron coming back so soon, but it turned out to work out just fine. Mm-hmm. Um, no, Lichtstein or Tony, he top of got the ass after the week before, didn't he? 
Yeah, well, I mean, Ainsley was out the week before, and I remember when when Bellerin first got injured, they asked, they spoke to Emery in his press conference, and he said, "Oh, we can cope. We've got Ainsley, we've got Lichsteiner, we've got Jenko." And I think I said at the time, when he, as soon as he said Ainsley first, I think that shows you where his preference is. It was only because Ainsley was injured last week that um, that Lichsteiner got hit, got the game against City. But I think in general, whether it'll be a back four or a back five, Ainsley's going to be first choice. Mm-hmm. And granted, he was also he's still out injured. I take it too. So yeah, that was the other one. I was thinking there's one more missing. So um, okay, now we're going to get into a few match facts. <laughs> um, obviously, you know, I, I'm trying to cast my memory back because it was a few hours ago, a couple of days ago. So a Wobi at 16th minute, Tony, we we go up one nil. Yeah, uh, good break down the left. Really good ball by Kolasinac because I, I know his delivery is usually good, but nine times out of ten he puts the ball in a very good area and then he expects people to attack it. Whereas this one uh, is a bit different. He clearly picked out Iwobi and it was the right ball to pick out as well because Lacazette in the middle had players around him. Um, the ball was so inviting that Iwobi had to hit it on the volley. I think anyone, if that if the ball comes to you like that, you have to. Uh, got got a bit of luck with the deflection but if you don't buy a ticket you don't win a lottery so I guess that's all you can say you can't say it was a great finish no one knows where it would have ended up if if it wasn't deflected I I imagine it would have probably been quite a comfortable save for the keeper but as I said if you shoot you have a chance of scoring so fair play to him yeah yeah Um, just while while we're going through these these goals and what was your thoughts on Awobi's game um I think it was a kind of standard Iwobi performance where he'd done a lot that was quite good. He was energetic. He ran at people. But his end product, I mean, I know he scored the goal, but as I said, it was heavily deflected. But his end product, I mean, he missed one outstanding chance. There, there was a couple of, of final passes that were that were quite poor. So it was a bit of a mixed bag. It was sort of all that was good about Alex Awobi, but all that was bad about Alex Awobi in, in, in the space of 88 minutes or whatever it was he played. Yeah, because I've seen a few people tweeting that, um, you know, he, he had a good game. I'm not taking not, not, nothing away from him. But it's probably his better game in the last couple of weeks that he's had, because so, he has had some shockers. Uh, Texas Gooner, mate, pretty much that was the first half. Wrapped up, and then we, we sneak one in just before um, half time. Uh, Lacazette goes, gets one assisted by Maitland Niles in the 44th minute, mate. Yeah, I noticed Huddersfield were extremely high up the pitch, uh, and, we, and we broke through their press. Uh, Wobi, uh, Wobi uh, he was involved in this one. He played McTyron through. Uh, McTyron all, almost lost possession. And then he found Maitland Niles on the overlap, and uh, and Lacazette was picked out on the far post. Um, give credit to Lacazette on this one because um, you know he he actually did what he's often criticized for, and that's not being in the box on on the end of moves like that. And he was in the right place at the right time on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, Tony, look, mate, and this is where it type of goes to shit, really, because. <laughs> We go into the half time. Look, as Maitland Niles gets a yellow card in the 55th minute. Uh, I'm trying to think what that even was now. Um, I remember. No, I can't really remember. It wasn't much too important. Look, there's a couple of substitutions. Uh, El Nenny came on for Tuera, um, 56 minute, and then Suarez he came on for Mkhitaryan. Pretty, pretty standard, I suppose. Well, I mean, Mkhitaryan was never going to do the 90. Um, to be honest, I, I'm, I've never been a Mkhitaryan fan, but I thought he had a really good game. Um, but he was, again, he was knackered just before he came off. There was an attack, I think it was, like, in the moments, literally 30 seconds before he came off. And you could see he just couldn't move. And you, and you can't blame him for that. He's been out for, what, six, seven weeks. Um, so that, that sub was always naturally going to happen. The, the Torreira one was a bit weird. I mean, I don't know what the reason was for it. It's not a criticism. It's just a, a sort of no one really expected it. Mm. Uh, and, yeah, it was... Yeah, a, it was odd. Well, well, the I mean, next... Know, but, yeah, well, the next sub uh, was the odd one for me, a Wobi for Willock. I was, 
where'd that come from? I mean, I think Iwobi had just missed a couple of good chances and I don't know if he wanted to just give these players minutes because you look at how bare our squad is at the moment. To be honest, I expected it to be in Ketia. Um, I, I thought they'd bring in Ketia on for Iwobi. Uh, give you that pace running down the wing as we were still tuning up down the time you can play channels you can chase it and, and bearing in mind where we've only got two strikers at the moment who tend to play together I thought he'd look to give the third one in Eddie some some minutes uh, I was quite surprised it was Willock he chose but I wasn't surprised that that the sub was made again Willock's Willock's probably further away from the first team than Eddie is but you do have to give him minutes sometimes because we might need him at some point and you don't want to bring someone in who's not played football for I mean he, he, he last played against Blackpool so if we needed him say mid-March for some reason if there's loads of injuries or suspensions it'd have been nearly three months since he's kicked the football and you can't you can't play like that so as I said I wasn't surprised that he made a sub I was, I was a bit surprised at who, who he bring on yeah look, and nothing against the kid like it was good to see him get a few minutes it was late in the game uh, and I suppose, you know, you're 2-0 up at that, that stage. You, we, we didn't expect what was going to happen next. So I uh, just uh, we thought it was just a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a shock, that was all. Um, I'll let you talk talk us through the own goal, Tony, in the 90th. Yeah, I mean, it's standard shit defending, really. We didn't press the ball. The line was shocking. Um, Leno got out really quick, and it was a decent half save. And then I don't really know what happened. It kind of looked under control, and then Kolasinac just kicked it in. It's, I did, to be honest, I, like in the ground we was at the upper end, so I didn't even know it was an own goal. And, and at the ground, Huddersfield credited to credited the goal to Diakabi, and it was only when I saw match of the day that night um, I realised it was an own goal. But I, I don't really know what he done. Like it was, it was really weird. I, I, I don't understand what he was trying to do, mm. but who knows. Yeah, well, that, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's fucking typical offense. Texas, you, you know, I had a, yeah. I had a, uh, I had a tweet ready to go. Uh, you know, the the end is near. Uh, Simpsons, Simpsons gif. I had that tweet ready to go. In oh, the, yeah. <laughs> it was like the ninety second, ninety second minute, and you know, of course, of course, that happened. I did the delete. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get rid of it, mate. Um, look, oh, as a fan, I'll let you. you what did you see in our second half? Because that was probably, I don't know, there's been some shocking, shocking halves of football that Arsenal played this season, but I thought that wasn't, that was, that'd be up there. Yeah, um, it was, it was not pretty, it was not pretty at all. You know, um, I, I think we took our foot off the pedal slightly, but then again, you know, we, we just kind of, we just kind of set back and, it's not something you really expect an Arsenal side to do against a bottom side like Huddersfield. You know, you 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 maybe expect us to try to push on and and try to and try to get that try to get that third more than more than we did. Um, the sub of El Nini coming on for Torreira, I I don't think that that really helped matters too much. And seeing that we were out of possession most of the second half, anyways. Um, you know, we were. I think that only pushed us, pushed us back further, and hampered us um, getting out of our own half. Hmm. Um, look, it's not really much more to talk about. It's it disappointing that that you know we conceded. I, I did see a see a um, stat. And I'm just trying to think where that was. That was actually you done the match ratings. Um, Texas Gurner for the blog and it was Huddersfield have failed to score in their last 8 hours and 57 minutes of footballs in all competitions <laughs> and of course and of course they you know they break the duck against us so. of course of course um, who was your man of the match my, um, my man of the match was Kashani. Kashani, yep uh, Tony uh, very tight between Koscielny and Mickey, but I went for Mickey. Mickey, um, yeah, okay. I, look, I don't disagree with you boys. I'm just going to give a shout out to Maitland Niles. I thought he had a good game. 
you know, you know, I was I was given the match a second watch, and I was probably a bit reactionary and and harsh on the rating I gave him. He actually had a really good first half, minus uh, I think a few of the times he was a little bit loose in possession, um, but he was he was a pretty good threat down their left hand side. And every time, every time he went down down their left hand side in the first half, it was it was dangerous. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I'm pretty much biting it on was the first half because the second half was just absolute rubbish. Um, you boys want to get in some questions because we do have heaps there. You want to add anything else onto that that bit of a rundown, Tony, or you're pretty good to go, mate. No, no, I think I was, I was going to say the same. I think people from what I've seen online were being quite harsh on Ainsley. I'm not saying he was brilliant. Um, and I think it's stuck in people's minds. I, I think the way we are as a fan base at the moment, I've seen people moaning about the, the three times he gave the ball away and not the, the time he got an assist, or which was a great ball and, and stuff like that. I think people remember the negatives and then that gives them a harsher view of him. Again, he wasn't excellent, but I've seen people absolutely hammer him and I guess everyone's seen the social media post by now um, that, that people have been tweeting him and, and on his Instagram. And I, I don't think he was anywhere near... I mean, look, no one should ever get abuse, but I don't think he was anywhere near bad enough where some people should think, oh, he's the one we should target. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, every, you know, Arsenal fans alike, mate. Um, gonna got to target somebody. I was just going... Oh, actually, sorry. Can I just say one thing before we get into questions? Yeah. So there was... Uh, tweets going around of people saying oh the Arsenal away end is shocking I can't believe I still go and watch these guys when they're booing off our own player that scored a goal in the game talking about Iwobi hmm. didn't happen so it what? just didn't happen like if it did there's maybe 10% of, of the fan base so when there's three, two and a half thousand people I think it was you maybe had 250 people that's not really audible amongst 25 uh, 25,000 people you, you're not going to hear 250 people boo so then you've got people who weren't there wasn't like that particular bit wasn't aired on TV and they're going oh it's a disgrace that people booed booed Iwobi I'm like well it didn't you're just you've read one tweet and decided it's true I, I know there was one thread I was reading and someone early on in the thread said oh I wasn't there was it really bad and the person's replies to them said yeah it was terrible blah 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 and then someone else further down on the thread has said to them, oh, it was probably, it was maybe 10% booing and 90% cheering him, uh, but people are acting like it was the other way around. And this guy who's openly admitted to not being there earlier on and asking questions about it has gone, nah, it was much more than 10%. <laughs> this, is what, this is what these big accounts do. Like, they tweet something and people who have absolutely no idea, first of all, believe it and then defend it and talk about it when they don't actually know what's happened. So now it's going to become fact Arsenal fans booed Iwobi when it just didn't happen. Like, fuck no, head, you fuck heads say on Twitter, man. Didn't happen. Fucking dumb cunts on Twitter. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah but that, the, the issue is now that will become fact. Yeah, yeah, I know you're buying. Yeah. Next time he has a bad game, it'll be, oh, it was due to fans booing him at Huddersfield. Mm. Actually, I think, and I, I think, um, oh, it might have been the son or one of them scabby fucking nuts. Uh, papers i think i read a headline on that today yeah and even even when i say booing him off that definitely didn't happen they, they may like that 10 like oh the 250 people that when i said boo they didn't boo they may have been sarcastic like hey when he's coming off like sarcastic cheering like yeah we're finally getting rid of him there wasn't a single boo mm. like it, as i said it just didn't happen and i don't know what I, I don't know what these accounts are trying to get out of it either like as i said these big accounts, likes, mate. Yeah, but what's the fun? Tony, you go. Tony, you go week in, week out. What's what's your general consensus on on the way on the away support? Um, and you know, I guess maybe maybe in the last in the last couple in the last couple of seasons, has it is it the same? Um, is it is it deteriorated or is it has it gotten better? What what is your uh, take? I'd say the majority of time is good. It obviously got a bit toxic towards the end of the Wenger reign. Um, but that was more because it was sort of half, I don't want to say half Wenger in, half Wenger out. I think it was probably, it was split, but it was Wenger out versus people that probably wanted Wenger to go, but they weren't going to go to a game just to shove banners up and boo the team and whatnot. 
So it got a bit toxic there. Then at the start of the season, it was good again. I guess there was a lot of belief and the people were happy they got change. And then I think people just realised they needed something to moan about again. So it's it's not been great the last few weeks. I mean, there is, uh, we were talking about on the pod last week, there's a lot of fans that are just bored of the whole situation of the club at the moment, whether they don't like Emery, they don't like Kroenke, and they've either stopped going or when they, they are going, they're just not as interested or excited as they, they previously were. Um, so I'd say the last few weeks it's been a bit flat. But it's a combination of things. As I said, people not inter- are not as interested. And then also some people that they campaigned for Wenger out for two years and they got what they wanted. So then they started off being cheery, but then they realized they were more popular or they got more likes and more retweets when they were moaning about shit. So they've just gone back to moaning. Mm. Fuck you, Anna. Fucking queer cats. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I don't want to get involved in this shit for it. <laughs> I said my issue is just when things didn't happen. I don't like if we if they or we did boo him, then okay, tweet about it and say it's a disgrace, which it would be. But don't start making shit up. Mm. Oh yeah, no, I agree. Totally, totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. Look, and I, I was I was thinking about Emery, you know, so far this season, and, and we've said look, fucking, he, he throws. Weird formations on weird players does weird shit, right? At times, I, I think I've said, "Fuck me, he's a bit of a cunt." But I, I'm not an Emery out, or, or I'm not going to fucking sit there and get behind my little keyboard and fucking type Emery out just to get a couple of fucking retweets and likes. But what I'm going to say is, I don't know, and you boys might disagree. Is he as bad as what people are saying at the moment? Like because I looked at. Uh, okay, like going over Wenger and whatnot, and then you look at Moyes at United when he was there. Uh, keep in mind, we haven't, you know, we've we've bought in Tuera, Leno, Guendouzi. Um, who am, am I missing? One Socrates. Socrates this year, right? Now we haven't spent nowhere near the amount of money as obviously a Man City, Liverpool, and oh, we probably have out. Spent Chelsea off. No, no, we no, didn't. We didn't. No, no, no. Yeah, but uh, so on his budget, what's the expectations? I, I think, again, talking about the, if we if we're still on the point of the away the way support, I think the issue is, and look, we don't have any right to be excited or entertained, but we've been spoiled with that in in the Wenger year. That even when we were shit, we were entertaining. Like, even in our worst years, we yeah. would go and we would have, have a go and probably score, probably concede a lot more, but we would have a go and it, it, was, it was exciting is maybe the wrong word, entertaining. Whereas Emery is a lot more pragmatic and, as I said, going with six, seven defensive-minded players at, at Huddersfield. And it is a lot harder to get excited about. So I don't even... Look, I, I've, I've said the whole time when, whenever this topic's come up that... In terms of performance or points tally, where we are in the table, we're probably ahead of, of where I expected to be. And and that's all the people that are saying, oh, you've got to give him time. That's their that's their go-to response. Oh, but we're, we're here, we're fifth, we're, we're one point off fourth, which is fair enough. But I, I know a problem with a lot of the, as I said, the match-going fans is that it's just not exciting. It's not entertaining. It, you're going and spending however long of your day traveling and, and whatnot. To, it's like going to the cinema if you go to the cinema and watch a shit film you moan about it mm. and I think that's the so that's kind so of what's going on here it's the entertainment factor yeah and look we don't have a divine right to be entertained but mm. you can't sort of erase 22 years of history and uh, I think that's what it is uh, I think that's the, the struggle a lot of people are having mm-hmm yeah, it yeah, it's your it's your classic it's your classic substance is substance versus versus style and you know in terms of where we are in the table I mean we're you know we're we're still in the hunt for the top four which you which you have to give Emory credit for um, so you know would we be moaning as much if we were playing attractive attractive football but we weren't anywhere near the top four you know I think it's a little bit of a catch twenty two with some of our fans you know they're going to they're going. They're going to be moaning. They would be moaning either way. You know, we win ugly, they moan, or, you know, we play attractive football and we lose and and we moan. So, 
I agree. I, I completely agree. I personally think if we was six, five points off the top four, say, so four points worse off than we are, but play in attractive football, I think there would be less moaning. I, I think what also is, is a, a bugbear with a lot of people and what's pissing a lot of people off is we're not playing attractive football. We, we seem to be a lot more negative, yet we still can't fucking defend. Like, if we was a lot yeah, more exactly. negative and we was, like, confident of keeping clean sheets every week, I think, again, more people would put up with it because it's like, oh, we might only, we're, we're, we're not playing the style, but we're rock solid. We're tight as you can be. But it seems like we're defensive for no reason at the moment. And, again, I think that's what's also annoying a lot of people. Yeah, it's a really it's a really strange one. We put putting substance we put we're putting substance over style, yet we're we have you know arguably a softer softer underbelly than than we did before. Yeah, but keep in mind, boys, we've been we've been strung by injuries too. You know, like we we never expected holding to go out all for the rest of the season. Yeah, but injuries are a fact of football. It's like it's. I look, I'm not going to compare to the Wenger era, era oh, no, but they, yeah. they happen then. Like they, it's football, it happens. Mm-hmm. Look, I was having a conversation with um, uh, Glenn. He listens to the podcast, Arsenal fan, and I said, and I'll, I'll say the same thing to you, boys. If um, Pep was managing this team, and it's come up, there's there's been a debate, and I I read a message about Vish was having a debate with his mate as well. Is is Pep a checkbook manager? Or is he a great manager? Now it got me actually thinking, and me and Glenn were talking about it. If he meant it was, and it's very hard to, you know, you, you're only, it's a it's a pipe dream. But if he was managing Arsenal with the budget and the injuries that we've had, would you say he's a great manager? And would he have us at where Emery has us at the moment? We'd, we'll never we, know. I would say, but no, we'd be a better team. You're, I have be absolutely no doubt in my mind. What as attack or defence? Total. I mean, it, it comes in. They kind of link if it. His teams have 70% of the ball. If you've only given away 30% of the ball, you're less likely to concede. I think we certainly have much more of an identity than, than we do now. Our identity is a mystery to just about, I think, just about everybody at this point in time. Um, with, Pep, with Pep's teams, they always have a distinct identity to how they play. Actually, you've hit the nail on the head there. Exactly what I think we're missing. We haven't, and that's probably why a lot of fans are confused because we don't have an identity. We don't know. Like you look at Rafa at Newcastle, you know, and, and they're moaning because they're playing boring, defensive, park the bus football, and the fans are moaning. But they're you know they're sitting down in wherever they're sitting, seventeenth or fucking sixteenth or something. But um, at least they know what they're going to get. We don't even know what that is at the moment. Right, and I think I think the main issue i take with with how we're with how we're playing is doing is doing it against a, a team like huddersfield you know i i don't i don't i don't like i don't like how i don't like how we're doing it against the, the bottom side you know and you know just absorbing pressure and basically playing a, play the low block against them in, in the second half um but you know i'm again i'm i'm not gonna i'm not gonna complain about getting the three points but it's you know just Against the side like Huddersfield, that's probably where I take take exception to. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, you agree, Tony? Yeah, as I said, I think that's one of the issues. It's identity, substance. Yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm not saying I'm in that club, but I can see why a lot of people are annoyed, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, right, back to this game quickly because as, as we'll talk on that, I just brought up, because we, we always bring it up, who scored ratings. Um, Maitland Niles took it out, would you believe? 8.1. He was the man of the match on who scored. So, Yeah, I mean, obviously, Texas Schooner, actually, we didn't know he was going to be on the show and he sent me that, uh, was it Saturday night after the game? Yeah. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, I mean, it's not what I would have had. But again, uh, as I said to him at the time, it's the who scored um, ranks you for doing not much but doing it well. And I think as fans, we tend to not really rate that. Um, as I said, like with Aubameyang, he gets man of match pretty much every time he steps on the pitch because he does not much but scores goals. Mm. So that seems to get him a high rating. And Ainsley in the first half was heavily involved in pretty much all of our attacking. Second half didn't really do much. Gave the ball away a few times at... But 
as I said, if you're not, he wasn't overly involved, but got an assist, and, and that sort of goes well for you on who scored, I think. Yeah, they mustn't take points off for a yellow card either. So. No, I mean, and then also, like, this is where I heavily disagree with who scored. For me, uh, Dia Carby was their best player by an absolute country mile. He he gave Monreal nightmares in the first half. Um, even in the second half, he weren't bad. But he, in the first half, he looked not unplayable, but he, he was definitely their main threat. And I think they gave him a 6.2. 6.5, 6. Like, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, still, that's... Yeah. But he tried things. He was the one on the ball, and maybe his crosses didn't find their targets, or maybe he had a shot off target, or he had at least three shots saved that I can think of. So he's probably been marked down because he's had shots that didn't go in. But he's actually had the shots. Mm-hmm. But he's the one that's caused the trouble. Aaron so, Moore's only got a 6.2, and I thought he had a good game too. So, I mean, to be honest, I thought he was pretty quiet. I don't think they got, considering how much of the ball they had, I don't think they got him on the ball enough from their point of view. But as I said, their rating is one of them that doesn't reward the players that, that try things. Mm. <clears throat> no, interesting. Okay, while well, we've got Texas Gooner on, let's pick his ratings to pieces. <laughs> and you can find I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to disagree. I'm going to disagree. I'll disagree with some of the ones I initially put on there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you can find them ratings at clockendtalk.blogspot.com where the boys pumping out articles. Uh, Texas Gooner, Craig, and a couple other lads there as well. Uh, who, who was your man in the match there? Lacazette, 7.5. Sound about right. Mikatarian, 7.5. Joint man. Yeah, in the match. 8. Kishani. Oh, yeah, Kishani 8. There you go. Ah. Yeah, oh. going back, I would have rated I would have rated Kolasinac way lower um, after watching the match the second time. He was he was pretty dreadful. Besides his assist, he was pretty dreadful. Oh, poor old Woolock didn't get it. Woolock didn't get a fucking rating. <laughs> yeah, I think he only got a few minutes. Yeah, no, uh, yeah I could be wrong. On, he was yeah. only on about 10 minutes, wasn't he? I've not got it in front of me. What did you give Aaron Ramsey's little sister, also known as Dennis Suarez? <laughs> I I think I gave him a I, I gave him a six. six. I mean, he didn't really do yep. much. He didn't he didn't do anything wrong, but he didn't you know he didn't do anything great. So, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, he's still one of them. So on as a I don't know. I'm still not convinced. I haven't seen nothing yet. Yeah, I wonder about I wonder about his physicality. That's my that's my big question with him. I think he's technically pretty sound, but physicality wise, why be a seven? Mm. Right, eh? okay. Let's ask some questions because we've got heaps to get through. Um, and you can also join that conversation at clock end underscore talk on Twitter. Sorry, Facebook people. We just I just too lazy to get it out there. <laughs> Okay, actually, we've got one here. I'll do this one first on Skype. Um, from Maddie. So, Maddie, you're first up, buddy. Um, my only question below are our remaining fixtures. Uh, do you think we can make the top, top four provided Man United, Chelsea drop points? I guess Spurs have pretty much nailed the top four. So he's gone through, like, so obviously away, Spurs, Everton, Watford, Leicester, Wolves, Burnley. I had a quick look at the rundown anyway on the on who's got what uh, in the remaining games. Uh, obviously, Man United, they're on 51. Chelsea and us are on 50. However, Man United, they have the worst run to come home because they've got to play five of the big teams, I'm pretty sure it was, so... Where we've only got to play Man United and Chelsea have got to play about three of them, I think. So oh, we've got we've got Tottenham as well away. I don't call them big time. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay, Tottenham away. So we've got the two, have we? Man United. We've got, Tottenham. We've got two United that haven't got Tottenham, but they've got the others. Um, I know United yeah. have got the worst out of the three of us between us and Chelsea. Yeah, I mean, for me, just to answer the question. Um, I think United will get it. They're in the best form. They're, they obviously have the point lead as well. They're in the best form. And I think apart from us, so they've got to come to us, but the rest of them, Chelsea, uh, Liverpool and City, have all got to go to Old Trafford. 
Mm. So although they have got the big teams, they've got them at home. Um, and as I said, I actually can't really see them losing to the small teams either. Um, so if I had to put money on it now, I've not looked at bookies odds or whatever, I, I, w- I would go, I think United will probably get it, to be honest. Okay. Great, Texas again. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, you know, United United is playing with all the confidence right now. Um, when you look at when you look at us, Chelsea and and them, um, you know, as far as as far as we're concerned, um, you know, we we tend to struggle against against the smaller sides. So there's there's really there's really no no sure bet. You know, whether we're playing whether we're playing one of the one of the top six or or the middle or, or bottom third teams. So I agree with, I agree with, uh, United probably slipping in there for fourth. Yeah. My heart wants to say Arsenal, but I, I tend to agree with you boys. It's very hard. Like, yeah, they Tottenham man United. Well, I think we've got them in a row, which is uh, going to be a tough two weeks. And, you know, teams like Everton, like the type of, I hate to say it, but, we're pretty much on par with them at times, you know. Like sometimes when we play, it's like an Everton, are probably a big team for Arsenal. Um, I think also if you look at our aways, we don't go. We've not got any of the bottom teams, so we've got to go Leicester, who's always difficult. Wolves, who've beaten everyone at home or got at least a point off everyone. Um, they play like all of the big teams. Uh, who's the other one? Oh, as you said, Everton. So Watford, it's not like Everton, we've yeah. got any of yeah Watford who we always struggle against. So it's not like we've got any of the bottom teams. We've we've played all them. We've got all the middle ground teams, and you can easily slip up in them games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah none of those none of those fixtures are are straightforward at all. Those are those are tricky ones. Yeah. So anyway, we'll boys, we'll just cross our fingers and hope for the fucking best, or or we'll take out your rope league, one of the two. Um, okay, let's get into these rest of these questions. So defence, hashtag Amory out. We're not getting top four. We aren't winning Europa League and we play ugly as crap. Most importantly, we are fullback and defensive-minded. Midfielders FC under Emery, giving him time may likely take us down even further. Uh, no easy answers. We've created a real mess, whatever I wish for. There's no way... They are sacking him. What would a... I don't know, can I read that word? Min Um Mind-numbingly. Mind, oh, mind-numbingly. min <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I didn't even know what it said. I've never heard that word. Um, uh, is us, uh, fifth and sixth, now challenging for the top four without getting it next season as well? They won't sack him unless we go out of Europa League in his opinion do you reckon they'll sack him if we go out of Europa League and near the top four well uh, no and it also depends what phase he's talking about of the Europa League um, because he says it, obviously the question he says that he don't think we'll win it so you're obviously going out at some point but if we come fifth or sixth and get semis maybe quarters it depends on the draw as well if you go out if you draw, for example, Chelsea in the last 16 or, or Napoli in the last 16 and go out, I don't think they're going to go, oh, you lost in the last 16, especially if someone like that goes on to win it or gets to the final. Um, I agree with a bit of what you said. I, I, I've said this before. I don't think Emery's the man to take us forward. Um, it's, it's a strange one because they've basically only given him a two-year contract. But then if they're going to allow him to bring his own targets in this summer then you're giving him a year with them with them players and then sort of you're just judging him on that one year seems, seems a bit strange really because if that year doesn't work then you've got a, you've got the same situation again in another year where you've got a manager coming in and everyone's going oh but he hasn't got his own squad he's oh, he's this he's that he's the other well it's Chelsea uh, it is a year isn't it yeah I mean it's, it's different for Chelsea because that's the, the routine they're in and, <laughs> and I, I kind of agree with what Chelsea do in that you're a manager. There's no such thing as having your own team. You're brought in to manage this club. If you thought you couldn't manage these players, you shouldn't have come to the interview. Mm. And that's the thing they say. I mean, the, the rumours, uh, we've all taken them as truth, that Emery came in and done a presentation and wowed them with how much he knew about the, the players and, and and how he would get them to play and, and whatnot. And then now suddenly when things aren't looking as rosy as we hoped, it's, oh, but they wasn't his players. 
but he's got the job on the back of knowing these players inside out and detailing how he's going to improve them and how he's going to get them to play. I don't think where football, you don't get long-term managers anymore. I don't think there's such thing as having his own team for anyone. This isn't a criticism of Emery. Um, look at Sarri. He's tried to change it at Chelsea. And if that don't work, you're out the door. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's that, football, well, you're, not, you're not saying Sarri ball at Chelsea, but and I, I say to a mate of mine who's a Chelsea fan today, uh, yes, he hasn't got his players, and yes, it's not his team, but will they give him the time to build that? I don't know. I don't think they will. Football doesn't work like that anymore. I mean, they've given him already given him two players they didn't want. They didn't want Jorginho. They certainly didn't want Kante moved out of the middle. They they don't really. They didn't. They definitely didn't want Higuain. But. They've, they've given him that and if it don't work he, he's in trouble as I said there's no such thing in football as having your own team mm. look at I mean look it's, it's a bit of a shit example but look at Solskjaer he's come in and he's made the players he's got better that's the job of a coach not this I can only work with my own players that that theory probably was correct 10 years ago when managers the average expectancy was probably three and a half years I think now the average lifetime for Premier League managers is something like nine months yeah, probably so yeah. Who, whoever has their own team you come in you get one you get that window you maybe get the January and then you're gone by the summer well, there's too much money involved now yeah but that's can't like, again, that's what coming to. so you can't have your own team that's not football isn't like that anymore yeah okay um, Ollie Davies uh, Texas Gooner even with a fully fit squad, we struggled to defend. Emery prioritised the defence, saying it needed addressing. So why is he going backwards? Hmm, hard one. Yeah, that's um, that's a tough one. Um, oh, 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 you know, there's oh, oh. there's no there's there's no there's no easy easy answers for this. But um, I mean, I think we. I think we lack, I think we lack the, you know, the quality at, at center back that we needed. And we never, I don't, I don't think we, we properly addressed it. Um, you know, and it's collective collectively at the back we're, you know, we're, we're just as bad or, or worse than worse than last season. Even, even with the, even with the additions that, that we made, um, so why is it going backwards? Um, you know, I I don't know. Your your guess is is really as good as mine. But I I think we I think we I think we lack a center. I think we lack a domineering center back. Uh, you know, like Liverpool added added Van Dyke. You know, I just I I don't think you know I don't think we have the quality back there. No, it's a, I'd have disagree. But but not only that, like you, you bring in a Socrates, and you wonder whether they're building the defence around a Socrates, like Liverpool have done with Van Dijk, and they haven't done that. Like you know, Mist- yeah, I don't know. We spoke about Mustafi the other week, Tony. Like, and, and you made it pretty clear. You, you're probably right. You know, Mustafi, he probably is a top top six team player. So. Do you want to go that next level? But then it comes down to, are the board really back in Emery? Because yeah, I mean, but again, it's another thing. Oh, like he he doesn't have that centre back to build his team around. Yes, he doesn't, but he should still have made them better. That's the job of a coach. Mm. So yeah, collect, yeah, collective collectively, we're just you know we're we're just not we're not getting the getting the best out of out of our back line. You know, there's there's a, there's a like number. His answer to that is just to shove more players in there. It's like, oh, instead of training them to be better, which maybe he's tried and it's just not worked for whatever reason, but we definitely haven't got better. So his answer just seems to be put an extra defender in, and then when that didn't work, it's put an extra defensive midfielder in. His his answer just seems to be shove more players in. Mm. <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> shove more in. <laughs> um. Andrew Roberts Robertson he says we still can't keep a clean sheet now it must be must mentally mentality be on the players how now it must be mentality be on the players minds yeah I see what he's saying <laughs> um I don't know defenses it probably would defenders I mean I mean the longer the longer we go without you know without keeping a clean sheet away from home yeah certain, certainly it's going to it's going to I think turn into a mentality issue 
Yeah, no, I don't think it will. Um, yep, this is a good name, this one. Abishik. I think I got that right, mate. Labouring win is... Is this the new style? Struggling to win. Uh, Grenit was big miss to our play, as he always is. Tez is always right. Uh, <laughs> I think... <laughs> are there any solutions, internal or external, that you guys can think of? Tony? Um, um, what's he talking about? And, and a solution to stop conceding goals or a solution for when Granite's out? I, I think he's talking about the creativity Granite brings when, so when he's missing... You know, we, we probably thought well, Dennis Suarez would probably fit that void, or some may have thought. So, is that a, I don't know, is what, what happens when Granite's out? We know how much he's missed when he's out. Well, I think it's more, we don't have enough players in front of the ball. So, I mean, we, we've seen it times even when Granite has been there that we've had absolutely no creativity because we've got one or two players ahead of the ball and it's difficult because it, the other team's going to have at least a back four and a defensive midfielder in general. So they've got at least four players and, and Granite's got two options or, or whoever's got two options. I think the key is to getting more people ahead of the ball, more options to pass to. But as I said, where are defensive problems? The, his resolution has been put more players there. That's naturally going to lead to more players behind the ball. So less options going forward, which is going to stay, stifle creativity. I don't think we've found a happy balance between defence and attack. Well, you look at that midfield that we had on, on the weekend. Um, they're all defensive mind players. Okay, Klozenac, he gets up forward. Maitland Niles was getting, was, was, you know, running the holes forward. But Torreira and Guendouzi, would you say Guendouzi's an attacking midfielder? No, not at all. No, he plays, he plays all defensive midfielders. And I think the issue is, especially if you're on a turnover, if the other team give away the ball. Your, your back three has become a back five. Then you've got your two holding midfielders. So that's seven players plus the keeper. They're all in general going to be behind the ball. So then they get the ball and their options are... So the other day would have been Mickey, Iwobi and Lacazette. And, and they're probably going to be not as far up the pitch as you want them to be. So then what can you, how can you create? Especially if the team's going to, as I said, going to have four defenders and then one or two defensive midfielders and you've got a player with the ball who can either go backwards and then everyone moans or can play forward to one of three players and then play it's not going to be creative if you roll the ball into Iwobi out wide who's maybe on the halfway line that's not seen as creative Iwobi then has to go and run at someone or beat someone or if yeah. you give it to Mickey he has to find the key pass so I think it's the, the reason for the lack of creativity yes we miss Granite but I think there's not enough people ahead of the ball there's not enough options well, I'm not going to... Yeah, I agree. And I'm not going to just say, Granite, let, let's throw Ozil in the, in the argument as well. The, yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, you can listen, name, you can, you can put Ramsey there. You, if we ain't got enough players ahead of the ball, I don't think it really matters who's, what, what name we name, whether it's Granite, Ozil, Ramsey, Gwendouzi. If there's, if there's no one ahead of them to pass to, you could have Pirlo, Skulls and Iniesta. If there's no one to pass to, it don't matter. Mm-hmm. The, but the, yeah, I can... I'm sorry. I, say, I completely agree... Oh, no, I was saying I completely agree there. And, you know, when you look at how we played against Huddersfield, uh, pretty much, I mean, 90 was 95 percent of the time. I would say you'd only see Lacazette, Awobi, McIntyre and either Maitland-Niles or Kolasinac that were that were up in in their attacking third. And it looked like everyone else was, you know, just it just sat back. And collectively, we, you know, we didn't look like we we wanted to push up as as a unit and and attack at them. I'm just having a look because so I haven't had a chance. What were the shots on target? Four. <laughs> there you go. Four shots on target for the game. Now one. Yeah. Uh, fucking pisses you off, doesn't it? Um, M W A Gunner. He says, uh, watch how Abemyang and Özil and Ramsey all of a sudden fit again. Uh, fit again for Thursday. Do we go all out and the tie so we can rest players in the second leg or would you go sh- string in both legs? Tony? Uh, I mean, because we've got no game at the weekend, I'd go full strength. Uh, as much as I usually don't like players travelling uh, to wherever it is we're playing, usually some far-flung part of Europe, I'd go full strength because they've got no game until the second leg. So if you go and win out there, say 4-0, 
which I think we won 4 1 there last year. If you go and win 4 0 uh, with a full strength team, then players then get nine, ten days off. Um, because as I said they're not playing the weekend and they've got Barte again and then it's Southampton at home so to give them 10 days off before Southampton at home w- would be a bit of a blessing so as much as I usually wouldn't say this just because of the situation we're in in terms of not playing on the weekend uh, I-, I would go full strength on Thursday yep and then yeah, okay, rest the few on the second leg and then bring the full strength back for the CFA Anthem. yeah Okay, Ryan Cost, uh, Texas Gurner, he said, is it time to move on from Awobi given his bad form in front of goal? Ooh, it's, I mean, it's a difficult one. Um, you know, I mean, Awobi's, Awobi's still still young. Um, he, you know, he has some, he has some positive attributes uh, that, that he brings to the side with, with his link play. Um, and, you know, on he was involved in both. He was, he was involved in both the goals, but yes, you know, he, he does struggle, I think with his decision-making also in front of the goal. Uh, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough one. Um, you know, as of, as of now, you know, I, I still think he's, he's crucial. He's crucial to our, to our side, but, um, you know, if we, if we had a deeper, if we had a deeper squad, I'd say maybe, maybe send him on loan, but you know, he's, He's needed at the moment. Um, yeah, well, so he is at the moment. I, I, look, next season, I would like, and it probably won't happen because for some reason, Emery, he loves the Wobie. But I wouldn't mind Reese Nelson coming back on from loan and send the Wobie out for 12 months on loan. See how he goes out on loan. Yeah, I mean, I think I think a loan I think a loan move would would do him do him good as long as as long as it's to the to a correct to a correct side that'll, that would utilize him properly and, and obviously improve him in these aspects, like his decision-making and his form in front of the goal. Mm. Um, Cosman Butter, he says, personally, I'm past feeling the need to ask for analysis, anything anymore. Uh, we're not developing identity until Emery has what he wants player wise. Mm. So what he's saying, but then I get your point too, Tony. Um, hack on Larson is Emery too conservative against lower opposition. We have talked about that against the top five, etc. Under Venga, but now it looks like the main focus is nulling the opponent rather than play a game even against lower oppositions. What do you guys think, Tony? Well, it's, it's what we was going on earlier. Um, I think if you're doing that and always getting results, look, if you're getting results, fans will put up with whatever you do. Um, but then you also have to win a style against a, a team like Huddersfield, who has said they've scored 13 goals. They've basically been the whipping boys of the league, only got 11 points. I, I, I think fans expect a certain level of style. And, and, and that's where the difficulty comes in. Um, as, as stupid as this statement's going to sound, winning just isn't just winning isn't enough anymore. I should it be? Who knows? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, like, it's his first year. He's played... We played Huddersfield earlier. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, um, but, like, is he not real sure about him yet? <laughs> is he, like... It's almost like he's trying to be a bit protective and not going all out. Uh, again, we, we're told that he's this super analysis no, no, man. No. Um, I mean, you don't have to do much analysis to look at a table and see they have 11 points and 13 goals. <laughs> you don't. You don't even have to watch a DVD. I hear that <laughs> yeah. Half a second. <laughs> yeah, very true. <laughs> yeah, you'd think you'd be all over this shit, wouldn't you? <laughs> Um, Sarvesh, she's going to go on a bit of a rant here, I think. But anyway, uh, we'll have a go. Calm. Tipping towards Emery out, not because we are not getting results or anything, but because of the football we are playing. I mean, if we give give him time to build his team, are we going to see more of that? If yes, then fuck that. I would much rather see us play beautiful football and finish sixth than watch this brand of football and finish sixth. No creativity, no flair, no defence. Defensively, all over the place. 
while playing with seven or eight defensive players, it was Huddersfield for fuck's sake. I don't need video analysis to watch that we don't need to play a back five with two holding midfielders against the team at the bottom of the league. Even a monkey or Tony could tell you that. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> um, <laughs> And the worst part is we didn't even defend well. If we play like that against... Are you sure this isn't your fucking burner account? (laughs) Off the top ten teams, we we would get battered and Emery is supposed to do something about that defence. But I don't see any improvement. Huddersfield had more possession than us uh, and played better football than us. Do we really want us to play like that against the smaller teams if we are challenging for the top four title? And, yeah, that isn't happening. Uh, So tell me, guys, are you really impressed by what Emery's doing? Do you really want to let him build his own team? And do you think he will be an Arsenal manager for long? I don't really, really crib like this every week because I like the support, but I am really not liking this Emery era. Uh, Okay, let's get Texas Gooner's opinion on all that. Well, I mean... You know, as we discussed earlier, the in the fact that we're still in the still in the top four fight. I mean, it's I, in considering considering how we've how we played. You know, I I think that's I think that's I think that's impressive. Um, you know, looking looking at that aspect. Um, but I I think I think time will I think time will tell um, whether you know whether what what our identity what our identity will be you know if 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 people are still holding out trying to figure out what what our identity is going to be this season i i think it's going to be going to be more the more of the same um you know and i honestly it at this point i i don't see emory stand for that long um but i think we'll just have to wait and see yeah, look, I see his frustration, and and as everybody Tony said it before, you know, if he were playing attacking football, then everybody would be probably happy. So it it is boring, very boring football at the moment. But I don't know, I don't know. I think something's going, more's going on behind the scenes. I, I like that really fucking threw me. Why he come out in January and said. Oh, by the way, we can only loan players. Like that, for me, just said you don't have the the board's approval. They aren't giving you any money for whatsoever. So whether they've said, mate, you fix the team you got, or, because you don't need anybody in unless you're on loan. I don't know, but something for me is going on there. So that's that. I, I almost think that he's. I don't know if he'll have another window. You know, at the end of the year, if we're outside of top six, no, and we'd lose Europa League, I think he's 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 on a fine edge because they're not willing to give him the give him the checkbook to spend. So, oh, fuck if I know. And then you see his van walk out the door, and you think, well, the, you know, something's going on for me. Something's definitely going on. Um, who As before you get on to the next question. Yeah. Uh, so for. If you want to win a pair of Arsenal socks, the code word, just DM us on Twitter, is Socrates, uh, S-O-C-K. And uh, we will put the names in a hat of all the people that do that, and we will draw a winner and someone will get some socks. There you go. So there's the code word. Okay, Siddhartha. Didn't I just read Siddhartha? No. No. Who was that bloke? Savish. Oh, same fucking, same cunt probably. Siddhartha Savish, right? I don't want. It just sounds very similar to fucking old mates. I don't want to be all negative every week, but can we have some sort of road, road? Uh, what's he saying? Some sort of rational explanation. For the performance against Huddersfield This is the man who we Want to um, Prioritise On the pitch What's he saying Also I I just want to mention I don't know about all Arsenal fans But we used to have a lot of support Because of the pretty football We used to play 
Um, so he's pretty much saying a lot like like Sardesh is, you know, the, the the quality of football we used to play. Uh, what what are we giving time for? He's arrogant towards flair players. We're letting Ramsey and Urzel go for sure. Look at the service we're providing our strikers. We cried out for this calibre of strikers years ago or so. Uh, keeps on saying out, saying we have an outside of finish of the top four. We're wasting our resources on a shit manager. Is this all now run around uh, against big teams and sit back and counter the small teams? I'm not saying I'll stop watching because I want to support the club, but I'm saying it's painful to watch. Uh, <laughs> please, gents, why should we give Emery... Uh, Time for Emery. Uh, much love for the podcast as always. Uh, you want to tackle a bit of this, Tony? Um, look, it's pretty much along the lines of what Sarvesh said. So uh, fans are upset with the defensive style of football. I, I don't blame. Them. Yeah, I mean, especially I, I'm not. This is not picking on anyone because I'm of that age. But if you're of an age where you kind of started supporting Arsenal in the Wenger era. Or, or, I mean, like, so I would probably, I think I went to my first Arsenal match maybe two years before Wenger, um, due to age. And and so then, for most of my life, it's been playing, even if it wasn't attractive, it was trying to score football. Um, and look, that has its positives and its merits. But then now when you see this, it, it's very different and it is probably a bit harder to get behind. Also, I think a lot of people feel misled because he came in and said, uh, we're going to play front foot, attacking football, we're going to be pressing. I, I would rather win 5-4 than draw 1-1 or draw 0-0, I think he said, was one of his opening lines. That's not what we're seeing at all. Um, so I think he came in and said all the right things, said stuff that got the fans excited. And, and now they feel a bit lied to, I guess. Uh, if he would have came in and said, "Look, this is going to be a building year. We're, we're going to have to, we're going to have to pack the defence a bit." And, and while I'm learning the league, and while I'm learning the players, and and we maybe will be a bit more, a um, bit less, sorry, proactive this season. I think we would still expect a bit more attacking football against Huddersfield. But I think you could maybe go, "Okay, uh, he, he warned us, warned us of this. Get behind it." And in a year's time, or six months from now, but I'm talking about in a year's time. We, we will be learning these new phases of attacks, new ways of attacking and, and this new different system. But where he's come out and said so much and done the exact opposite, I think it's left a few people disheartened. Yeah, and there's a, a definitely, definitely. It's like, and I don't know where Siddhartha is or Sarvesh is, but, you know, if you boys are like me, you, you, you're getting up at all weird, wonderful hours of the fucking morning to watch Arsenal play and... Let me tell you, some games is fucking hard to watch at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that artist field second half, that's fucking, yeah, it just, it's, it's hard. Um, <clears throat> MAA Gunner, there could be a point separating fourth and sixth. At what point do we decide which route is the best? Yeah, it's not a bad question. Um, I'll go to you, Tony. The same as what I've said all season, when the games start to, to really clash, like at this round, there's no clash because we've got them on Thursday, no game in between them on Thursday again. When it's when it's down to the games that you're really going to have to play your first team in and go all out to win, then that's when the decision has to be made. And that may only be three weeks away, but we never know. You could get a, a nice tie in the in the last six the last. 16 and then that question can be delayed another two weeks or another three weeks so I think the time is I don't think there's an actual answer it's just when the fixtures start to clash in that kind of way mm, okay um, MAA Gunner also says <laughs> Schwinn's burner accounts have begged me to stop the attack on Schwinn sorry lads it was fun while it lasted <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Schwinn, eh? What a cunt. <laughs> um, A-D-E, or Addy, uh, three centre-backs, two DMs whilst playing about the bottom team in the league. Second half struggles again. 
poor formation and starting lineup again. Substitutes I didn't understand. Left his personal signing on the bench for what reason? Yeah, we ever going to see old Dennis fucking son start? You'd think that'd be the game for him to start. Um, Pierre Aubameyang Golden Boot is there? Is the only clean sheet against Arsenal? Uh, have these days in London Connolly washing room do our defenders have the mental capacity to be top level uh, I think you summed it up before Texas Guna no uh, Clay conservatives Awobi Lacazette Mickey look dangerous today uh, best game Mickey has had in Arsenal shirts so far Guendouzi will be a star player in five years maybe less why does Emery set up defensively against these teams? It seemed they didn't have any trouble getting through our midfield. If you boys... <laughs> just jump in, lads, if you think there's something different here because they're all pretty much on the same style of questions, you know? The, the, the attacking fair, defend, defensive midfielding type fucking questions. So, which, that was the game. That was a shit game. Vish says, uh, what are your thoughts on Dennis Suarez? Personally, I don't see what he brings to the team. Fans slate Ozil for being uh, Langard, Lang, Langard, Langwood on the pitch and not affecting the match. Will we get just Ozil 2.1? Yeah, in my opinion, with Suarez, his impact for the past year, two matches have been non-existent. Texas Gurner, what do you think of him? Um, I vaguely mentioned it earlier uh, about Suarez. You know, I'm, I'm questioning his physicality um, and adapting adapting to the Premier League. Um, but I think he's I think he's of technical quality. Um, what did you say about saying about Ozil being languid? Um, oh, he gets slighted. I don't. Being languid, yeah. I don't. I don't think he's. I don't. I don't know if I would I would say he's Ozil Ozil 2.0, but I you know again I I don't think we've seen en- we haven't seen enough of him yet. Uh, I think he'll primarily be played played on the wing, uh, but you know we he hasn't had much of an impact. But in the past two matches, but he hasn't really had too much of an opportunity either. Um, you know, coming on against against City when when we're already we're already down and then. And then just to see off the game against Huddersfield, so I think we need to see more of them. My problem is, and I'll just I'll throw this to both of you boys: Mikatarian, Özil, Dennis Suarez. Look, Özil's he's, a, he's he does some freakish stuff, but they're very similar kind of players, you'd say. Uh, well, this is this is my issue with Suarez, and I'm not basing it on the two games because I, I think it's completely unfair to judge him on two substitute performances. But I I think he's a very neat and tidy player, but I don't really see what he brings. He doesn't score goals. He doesn't get assists. I think comparing him to Ozil is fucking criminal because even when Ozil looks uninterested, he makes he creates chances. I think he's still our leading chance creator this season. He's only played about half the games. So with, with Dennis Suarez, again, he, he's neat and tidy, but does he impact the game? And that's my question. For me, from what I've seen previously to Arsenal, is it, is probably not or not enough. And again, no, uh, yeah, but the style, thing, I don't like them type of players. Yeah, but the style of play that they bring, like uh, look, let's say Mikatari and Dennis, they're very, they're very similar players. But again, I, I think Mickey does more. He's going to trouble. He's going to trouble the goals and assist charts. I think I think I can't remember the exact number. But I think Dennis Suarez has got nine goals in his career. Yeah, like, I think Mickey's probably got that for Arsenal, and he's been. Most fans will tell you he's been shit for us. I'll tell you he's been shit for us, but he's probably got the same amount of goals for us as as Dennis has got in his whole career. Mm. Yeah, and, and Mkhitaryan, I, I think he's the type of player that you know really helps drive us drive us forward into the final third and he's a li- and but he's also a little bit you know loose loose in possession um where Suarez I don't I don't think he'll quite give us that drive into the final third but you know he's probably a lot tidier in possession than Mick Tyron is so I don't I don't think you can really compare the two just from what I've seen so far mm, okay 
Um, okay, Vish says we're in the hunt for the top four. I'm not going Emery out like many of our fans. Have we lost our identity on the pitch? Are we flare attacking team, a defensive counter attacking team, or are we attempting to win a trophy for the worst defence in the world? <laughs> it's hard to disagree with any of that. Um, and we've covered a lot of it anyway. Uh, Tony, as someone that watched the game live, did we play that poorly or did Huddersfield have the game of their lives? We looked dangerous in the counter, but not very lethal in the finish of those counters. Was the formation in preparation for the upcoming Spurs and United game? Um, I don't think Huddersfield played particularly well, so I wouldn't say they had the game of our li- their lives. I thought we were very poor. Um, too negative, not enough players ahead of the ball. As I said, you should be proactive against a team like Huddersfield and pin them back. But they, well, we was back. I wouldn't say if they pinned us or we just stood there. Um, I don't know if the formation is preparing for them games. It's a long way away. We've got at least four games before then. We've got Barté twice, Southampton and Bournemouth, um, and maybe another. But off the, even off the top of my head, we've got four games before that. We changed formation from the week before. So City, we played a four at the back. This week, we played five. So if we are going to be going a five at the back, why why now? Why would you choose to use that game to prepare it for games that are a month away? Uh, I mean, uh, it might be the case, but that's not the way I would see it. Uh, he goes on and says, personally, I felt we were too, too casual once we scored. Um, this was the Optimus by... Uh, Maitland Niles, who seems so calm and on the pitch, like he fucking Jesus, hard to read some of these fucking typing. Uh, on the pitch, like he smoked a bag of weed before stepping onto the pitch. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I thought he, I thought he wasn't too bad. But, um, question for Tony: Did did he hear the Huddersfield fans singing? You're nothing special, we lose every week. I saw it on a comment on the AFTV saying it happened. Yeah, yeah, no, it was quite loud and, and funny. So we, we were singing How Shit Must You Be, We're Winning Away, and then they replied with How Shit Must You Be, It's Only 1-0. Um, and then, yeah, and then they went, uh, You're nothing special, we lose every week. So, yeah, it did happen, and to be fair, I got around the applause. <laughs> That's good. brilliant. That is good. Yeah, that is it, good. It, 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 it even, like... Because obviously the chance, especially when you're next to the away fans, which you are at Huddersfield, some teams give you the whole stand and you kind of do lose a little bit when it's like that because the, the, your your rival fans are not next to you. But Huddersfield, you get like half of the oh, one then behind the goal. So then you've got their fans next to you and you do get a lot of backwards and forwards. And, and when they... Uh, when they're singing, you're not you're not special. We lose every week. I don't, there was no reply to that. It was just Arsenal awesome fans clapped them. To be fair, <laughs> uh, Sandeep he also asked, um, "Is Suarez a panic buy for Emery?" I don't know if it was a panic buy. It was the fact that he only could loan players, so apparently he had no fucking money. So we can loan players, and I I haven't seen the who are available for loan list, but I'd imagine. Dennis Suarez, Tony would have been pretty high up on that list. I mean, I'd, uh, to be honest, I think it was just someone Emery wanted. I mean, and he happened to be available for loan. I wouldn't say it was a panic, um, but I, I probably would say, obviously, if you, we're not talking unlimited funds, but even if we had funds, I, I think Suarez would have been the one he went out and brought. And I think he wanted Suarez for whatever reason. And, and that's obviously his call. Mm. Um, but no, I wouldn't say panic. We chased him for long enough and and he knows him. So no, not for me. You're probably going to get a few of those players come in. Who's that other player that Emery likes? Ever, Ever Benega. Yeah, I reckon he'll be a summer purchase. Um, Sandeep says, uh, the last I saw a team play boring football was Man United with uh, Mourinho. We're not not far off we're getting extremely boring to watch with our whatever style of play on the plus side we won at Huddersfield because I thought we might actually lose there yeah fucking probably was uh Sandeep also says I'm not going to say Emery out because I know 
he won't be getting sacked and the ball will stick with him no matter what. No matter where our position results will be, uh, club is rotten from the top and unless the owners show a sense of ambition, I'll accept that we are a mid-level club. Uh, Sandeep also says, also echoing, echoing Cosman Buddha's comments, if this carries on, I wonder what the questions what questions can we ask on the podcast? It will definitely have to be less <laughs> less match related because it, because it is getting repetitive on the formation and team selections. Yeah, we'll have to think of something, eh? Oh, we don't control what questions are asked. This look, it's one of those things. We, we we go and have a big win somewhere, and everything's all happy again. We was doom and gloom. We'd been dipped by Liverpool. We lost to West Ham away, and we was awful. Then we go and beat Chelsea, and everything was positive again. The, the, the shit thing for us is just a few days later we went and stunk the place out against Man United so what, one good result changes everything and you've just got to try and back that up and, and March is going to be so important for that because we've got obviously Tottenham and United not in that order and then oh no it is in that order and then I think we're meant to have Wolves but I think that game's going to be moved if they win their cup tie this weekend that game's going to be moved um, but we'll have some Europa League games in between, hopefully. It's um, momentum's a big thing. Yeah? So if we win three games in a row, if we beat Tottenham and United, these questions are all going to be fucking completely different. No, I was going to give him a topic on Schwinn. Schwinn's life or something. He's always <laughs> interesting. Ask us about Schwinn's destinations and his sightseeing that he goes and all that. Fuck. Well, he's, he's here for, he's here for um, a couple of games. So if anyone wants to meet him, I won't be there, but I'm sure he'll be more than happy to have a drink and buy everyone a drink. It's his round because he's the traveller. That's how it works. <laughs> He'd probably drive his Ferrari to the game and sit in some corporate box. I did get a ticket in the box, to be fair. <laughs> you did? <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, fucking Schwinny. Okay, uh, Sandeep says OGS Manager of the Month, Unai Amory, Dickhead of the Month. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just, just pulling it out there. I don't think that's an actual award. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking classic. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, see, I like that shit like that. Uh, Hack on Larson on the Ars blog pod with Ornstein. Orny is talking about how good the backroom organisation and staff is getting and is now. He never say or talking about Emery is the right man or not for the job. Should we pay attention to what What do you think? Tony? I'll just uh, at you. I wouldn't pay much attention to it. Again, Ornstein's leaked stuff by the club. We've all known that for a long time. So he's not even if he thought the manager was terrible, it would only be an opinion and he's not going to come out and say that because suddenly your privileges very quickly get revoked. Um, and also, I think with a backroom staff, you t- they tend to not change too much. I know we've seen what we've seen with Sven, but in general, they tend not to change too much. So they're not set up for a particular manager. That's the system we'll play by and, and whoever the manager is, deals with that basically um so I, I don't think it's a case of we've set we're setting this team up for emery we're setting this backroom staff up and, and whoever the manager will be at any time deals with that basically okay uh heck on larson are fans so stupid in real life they appear on social media <laughs> if that's the case i pray for the future fucking hell <laughs> i reckon these some of these cunts should have an iq test before fucking creating a profile mate um, hack on Larson Why is that the fans That we always have Do be either Or or And we have to take a side On almost every single thing To be fair That's one of my biggest issues With Twitter as a platform Like To say for me for example I'll hammer Lacazette one week If I don't think he's been good And then it's suddenly Tony hates Lacazette And it's like no, but if he's not good, I'm al- like one week. I'm allowed to say that doesn't mean like uh, you get comments like, "Well, don't cheer his next goal then." No, that's not how it works. Like, you can be honest. It's okay if someone's bad. Say, you know what, they didn't do too well this week. <laughs> I, I don't. It, that's a, I, it, what the question is basically. You have to be every in every decision. You have to be either or. 
Mm. You can't you can't just have an opinion on something that happened that week. You have to be Lacazette's terrible or Lacazette's the best player in the world. You can't be one week he's good, one week he was bad. It, for some reason, that's not allowed anymore. I don't get it. Yeah, some yeah some people don't know where to draw the line between being being critical and then you know just just hounding trying to hound a player out or something. You know, it's, they think it has to be one or one or the other. But you know, yeah, it's totally totally fine people, to be critical. Yeah, I think a lot of people double down as well because say one week they've said he's been bad not like anyone but I don't know I use that as an example but anyone for one week they say he's been bad and then the next week they feel like oh I don't want to seem to be wrong so then even if he's good they have to bring up some excuse that why he's actually really bad and he's just been lucky or, or whatever and the same with good so they go oh, they go over the top oh, he scores a goal or whatever he keeps a clean sheet and they go oh, he's the best keeper in the world and then next week when he's shit, they have to, or not so good, or doesn't keep a clean sheet, they have to come up with a reason why why they wasn't wrong the week before. Like it's it's okay, it's not flip flopping to to have an opinion on what happened that week and change the opinion next week when something different happens. That that's how things work. But as as Hakon says in the question, it seems on on Arsenal Twitter especially, you have to have one opinion on everything and and stick to it. And I, I really don't get it. I don't read it. I fucking stay well out of this shit. No, but I mean, again, using like as an example, how many times have we seen people that you know, like, you don't even have to look at their who's given man in a match, and it doesn't matter what happens. You can tell before the game. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Mate, no, so I, you say, I, and as I've told you, I was, well, if I do a poll, I deliberately throw one in just to be a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's what I'm saying. You say you don't read it, but you are fully aware of it because we oh, see yeah, it. Oh, yeah, no, I am, I am aware of all it. Or yeah. the weeks, again, I've used Lacazette as one example, some of you, some of the weeks where you know Xhaka's going to be the worst player on the pitch. Like, or certain people are going to say, oh, Xhaka was shit. Regard, they could, they might as well write their ratings before the game. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I get a lot of ats, ats when Granite's had a shit week. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep atting me, cunts. I don't really care. Um,. Hack on Larson. Uh, I'm just trying to understand this question a little bit. Uh, is Emery shipping away big name players because of maybe this bad experience from PSG? Not that he doesn't want to be challenged, but he wants players that listens and does the job without any questions. Do you guys think about this? If you kind of get understand what I mean, if you kind of understand me, um, Tony. Uh, I I think. The, the only reasonable explanation is that his time at PSG has scarred him. It might be wrong, but looking from the outside, it's the only it's the only logical conclusion I can come to. I, I don't know about the listening thing because just because there's big names like Cavani, Neymar, Dani Alves, who um, Verratti, who he had problems with at PSG, and and others all here, just because he's a big name doesn't mean he doesn't listen. I mean, we've never seen reports in Ozil's career elsewhere of of him being difficult to manage. I've, I've never heard anyone complain about him at any club. In fact, the opposite in general. Um, so, as I said, the only conclusion is I, I wouldn't bring the listening part. I think the first half of the question is the natural conclusion of what we see from the outside. The second part of the question, I don't know the answer. No one knows the answer, but I wouldn't agree with it from what I know of just watching football and, and reading reports. Mm, okay. Uh, that RC fella, brace yourself for another episode of hashtag yak on with a hack on. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got your own hashtag hack on. <laughs> uh, no, I'm trying to ask you something, Texas Gooner, but there's it's lots of just rants, mate. So it's not real questions <laughs> here. Um, clock and uh, from a Wobi or at, at a Wobi. Fucking yeah, don't worry about it. It won't be season S S S Z N seventeen. It's it won't be season seventeen. I'm assuming. Okay. Question for the pod: Should we be lowering our quality expectations for the summer? Example: Replace. Looking at the Dembele's twenty-two, quick, skillful, and getting relegated like Tony. Torreira transfer fine hidden in plain sight gems. You, you have messed up so I've, much of that question. I just realised that. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, you read it. Go on. I fucking. I've not got it in front of me, but it was along the lines of: Should we stop linking, like being linked with high quality players like Dembele, 
and look for sort of young, unpolished diamonds like Dia Carby, who's 22, young, quick, and whatever you just said, or Tony's shout of someone like Adama Traore earlier in the season. Uh. But you just went from, should we move on from Dembele to 22, quick, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, getting, yeah, okay. So basically, should we look, should we look, should we be looking for hidden gems as opposed I mean, from the Dembele's? Yeah, I'm going to start this off by talking about Diakabi because he's he's mentioned him specifically. I know next to nothing about him. He was very good on on Saturday. Uh, he I watched. I saw. I mean, they lost five 0 to Chelsea, so it's hard to say he was very good. But again, he looked like the only player that was going to do anything. But that's my knowledge of him. So I don't know how good he is. Uh, but in general, I think that's the market we're going to have to shop in. Um, and fans probably won't like it. Um, but, I mean, even, say, uh, Nicolas Pepe, who a lot of people want, is he really a big name or is he become a name because someone said they wanted him and then he scored a lot of goals in France this year and he's kind of become a bigger name just through people talking talking about him? Uh, I think... I think the hidden gem, well I don't know because I would have said the hidden gems is the way to go but we've just sacked the guy who's notorious for finding them so fuck knows what about you yeah Jason? if we're yeah if we're on the self-sustaining model um, I agree with you Tony that's that's you know that's the route we're going to have to go and you know especially especially if we end up you know we don't know what's going to happen but you know, if we end up in the Europa League again next season uh, that's Probably more of the type of type of players we're we're going to go for. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind that model. I, I don't mind trying to find those younger players. My problem is, does that mean we're going to become a selling club? We're going to find these younger players. Are we going to keep them, or we're going to find these younger players and we're going to sell them in the next two to three years and then try and well, go that's again? What I mean. Self-sustaining is a way to please the fans that you're a selling club. If you say you're self-sustaining, it means we're going to buy people for cheap and sell them for more, basically. So, yeah, of course, we are. So we're going, to be a sell- we're going to be a selling club. Yeah, but, I mean, I'd still argue that basically any club without a sugar daddy on. I mean, Liverpool have done it differently, but they, they still are. They, they get players. They got Sterling for next to nothing, sold him for 50 million. They got Suarez for 20, sold him for 80. They got Coutinho for eight, sold him for 120 odd. And then they've been self sustaining, but they, no one sees it now because they've brought in Van Dyke, they've brought in Salah, who's done unbelievable, they've brought in Allison. But in a way, they're the target. They, no one's called them a selling club when they were selling Suarez, Coutinho, and, and um, Sterling because of the way they replaced. But it's exactly the same model. They buy them either young or cheap or when they're slightly unknown. Um, Suarez was doing doing a bit in in Holland and no one wanted to take the chance on him. And they did for 20 million and, and we all saw what happened. I think, um, I, I think yeah, you will be a selling club, but it's not like the way a selling club used to be seen as is that anytime anyone gets half decent, you just get rid of them. And you think, I'll, I'll keep them for a good season or two and then remove them. And then yeah, and in going... Yeah, and going off going off of that, you know, going off of that model and, and that approach, you know, it's you know, it's it's still it still beats what we've done recently, you know, letting letting contracts go down and having to give away big players for free. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well that's a that's a fucking annoying, isn't it? Giving away for none. I'm just trying to look if there was any more questions. I thought I seen another one, that was all. But anyway, this is doesn't look like it. Um, Europa League, Tony, during the week. Thoughts there, mate? Uh, uh, I, I, I'll probably expect a fullish squad. Um, we should win comfortably. As I said, we saw pretty much a B team last season go there and win 4-1, I think it was, in the end. Um, I don't know if they've got any better. I, I doubt it. Um Hopefully, uh, I would probably expect the tie to be over um, after Thursday. That's what I expect. But then you never know. Do we go eight at the back again and win one nil? Mm. Texas Gunner, thoughts? Um, full squad. We need to take care of business and nip it in the bud. Mm. No, I think so too. 
Um, <laughs> there was a poll I just I was just scrolling through our account checking for any other questions. I don't know whether it was you or Schwinn, Tony. Uh, what's your prediction on where we'll finish? So, you know, 900 odd votes. 3% said third. Well, they're fucking wrong. Now, this is where it gets interesting. 35% said fourth. 28% say fifth. And then 34% say sixth. So, what was fourth? Sorry, what what were the difference? What were fourth and sixth? They were too close. Thirty-five percent say fourth, and thirty-four percent say sixth. Okay, which I, I thought that's pretty interesting. At this yeah. at this moment in time, I I would probably say fifth. You know, my my opinion may may change in in a few weeks, but just off of off a of current form, I say we miss out and we get fifth. Yeah, a lot. I I I think. I don't think Man United can keep going. I think the bubble's got to burst eventually. I just, geez, it's almost like he's been gifted, isn't it? Like, they're just yeah, doing doing everything right, but it's almost like a honeymoon period. I, I think it'll it may come to an end, and like I said, they've got to play five five of the top teams, and uh, oh. who are all uh, four of the top teams who are all all going to be wanting to win, like. Tottenham's not an easy game. We're going to be the easy game. Chelsea's probably going to be an easy game for them. They but... played Tottenham twice already. Oh, so they don't play Tottenham? No. Oh, we play Tottenham. That's right. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's right. They got everybody but Tottenham. So. Yeah, I don't know. Liverpool City would be their hard ones, obviously, but Chelsea and us, who knows? Okay, gents. Um, you got any else there, Tony? No. Uh, that's it remember oh, I'm not going to say what the word is but remember the code word if you want a pair of socks and uh, DM it DM it DM it to us DM it to at clock end underscore talk on Twitter don't DM it on Snapchat or fucking anywhere else because we won't fucking see it um, we also don't have Snapchat so it'd be quite hard to do it on there I was just going to give you a swing Snapchat <laughs> do it <laughs> <laughs> you can send dick pics to Schwinn then. <laughs> uh, he love that. <laughs> Righto, boys. Uh, Texas Gurner, thank you for joining us, mate. I apologise. There wasn't a lot of questions there really to aim for you, buddy, but, yeah, it was good to have a chat. Uh, no worries. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. No worries, mate. And thank you again, Tony. We'll speak to you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we're going to do a Europa League one because we haven't got a game next week, so we're going to do one after Barté. Yeah, we might do because, uh, yeah, we probably will because we might even throw in our, somebody asked us to do our sell, loan, fucking sell, loan and buy or something. I can't remember what it was now. Um, yeah, and I've got a great we, site for the episode as well. So, so yeah, we'll, prob- we'll probably do that. That next week, who we keep, sell or loan, I think it was. So, yeah, we'll do that next week. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, Thank you for downloading. Thank you for subscribing. Um, If you're an iTunes subscriber, don't forget to give us a little rating. Um, We have heaps of people that say they will, but the cunts never do. So Um, thank you, everybody, and good night and goodbye. See you, boys. Adios. Bye.